Happy Wednesday, everybody, and welcome to day three of the Dart Zone Review-a-thon. In today's episode, we're going to be covering the long-awaited Nexus Pro X. Just like the Aeon Pro X, which I covered yesterday, this blaster has been high up on my please don't suck, please, please, please don't freaking suck, please don't suck list. And this one is arguably even more important than the Aeon Pro X because this thing is the replacement to one of the most influential blasters in the modern generation of foam flinging. The Nexus Pro was a big deal of a blaster. Whether it's good or bad, everyone watching this video has to come together and agree that the original Nexus Pro was arguably one of the most important blasters released in the last like five or six years. And this is the one up to that blaster. So how well does it do? Let's find out. <music> So the Nexus Pro X is a 2024 release out of Dart Zone in the Adventure Force Pro series, which if you are somehow unfamiliar, is Dart Zone's releases that are exclusive to Walmart and shoot 150 odd FPS or more in some cases. Usually from 120 to 150, this one exceeds that by a landslide, but I will address that later. And this blaster is pretty important since it's replacing the Nexus Pro. So with all that said, let's get into the design. Since the magazine, the B car, the scar muzzle, the front iron Sight, the rear iron sight and the scar muzzle holder are completely separate from the design they go while I talk about design and this blaster oh it looks good I really like it a lot I a lot of people don't really agree that this is a good looking blaster due to the fact that the purple on here just kind of doesn't match the decal that it has on it and the decal is like this big thing that extends all the way to the front I heavily disagree. I think this blaster looks absolutely fantastic. I love this kind of like shark mouth shaped front end that it has with this big like thick muzzle end that it's got on the front. The foregrip and the main grip being like these super angular kind of swept back looking grips, the Picatinny rails that it's got on it, all the little lines, this triangular pattern of orange that contrasts with the purple. The fact that the decal has all these orange details that just contrast with the purple, all the orange and the dark gray, almost black looking lines that it's got. It is a very, very nice looking blaster in my eyes. I think that the shape is amazing and I think that the color really does it justice. The stock matches perfectly. Everything about this blaster just blends with itself. The only thing that doesn't really make sense is the coloration of this B car that it comes with. It suddenly introduces this red which is not seen anywhere else on the blaster and just kind of sticks out when you see it compared to everything else. And when you add the little extra details back on I think that the iron sights and the scope look really really cool together and are actually functional which I will address more in a little bit but my favorite detail without a doubt is the scar muzzle holder right here i love blasters that have two front muzzle ends i don't know why but it's always been such a cool detail that i really appreciate whenever a blaster does and this blaster is the coolest integration of that style of detail i've ever seen because not only are you getting the two front muzzle ends but they're completely functional having this be a scar muzzle that is removable and this just being a storage space for it that is integrated onto the blaster itself is such an awesome idea and i love it a lot Though that does bring up a question, what is this thing for then? Because this is meant to hold the scar muzzle. You are meant to be able to put the scar muzzle in here and have it set on the side of the blaster to use whenever. But if you can put the scar muzzle in the front of the blaster, it kind of makes this obsolete. And it doesn't really work when you try and put this in it since this is such a front heavy piece of like attachment. I guess you could use it for that, but if you're not using it for that, then there's not really much point in having this thing included. So. I don't know what's going on there. Most of the time I leave this thing off because it just seems like an extra peripheral that is added onto the blaster that just increases the volume and makes it asymmetrical. And I mean, without this, it is perfectly symmetrical. So I don't know, I am leaving it on for the review, but usually you're not gonna be using this thing since you're gonna be using the front muzzle end that is integrated. Let's talk about the ergonomics. This blaster features a main grip, a foregrip, and an adjustable, removable buffer tube stock. But since this is a stock included, I am going to be treating it as a built-in stock, which includes a stock and a cheek rest on top. The main grip is exactly the same as the Aeon Pro X's grip, and it works wonders on this blaster. It's super duper 
comfortable. It's a really good size. It's a really good volume. It's a really good shape. Honestly, the only complaint I have with this grip is that it's a little bit thin up close to the top. Same complaint with the Aeon Pro X. And I think that it's a bit bigger of a deal with this blaster since this is a primary size blaster rather than a pistol size thing that you could use a sidearm or a secondary. As for the foregrip, it is this like angled back 45 degree foregrip and it is so nice. I don't know what it is, but oh my gosh, I love this foregrip a lot. It is just super comfortable. This texturing kind of has a carbon fiber style print on the sides of it. On the back, there are these ridges. On the front, there's ridges. And there's this big like extended fore area for your index finger to go, which kind of gives off the same vibe as holding onto a main trigger. It is a really, really nice main grip and is a nice foregrip and they complement each other well. Whether you're using this or you're just putting your index finger down there, I think it works very well. I do like the fact that they included this because let's say you just want to hold it like this, but you have really, really big hands. Instead of having to sacrifice and putting your pinky finger down here, you can just put your index finger up there and that gives you plenty of extra space. As for the stock, the one that's included is a little bit cheap feeling and it does wobble around quite a bit, but it is stable enough and doesn't ever collapse on you when you're using it. And it is a pretty comfortable place to put a against your shoulder. I mean, I've seen better stocks out there personally, but it does get the job done. And the cheek rest is pretty good. No real complaints there. So how does this blaster work? Well, it is a pump action mag fed springer like many, many, many other blasters that are pro that you can buy nowadays. But you take your mag, you put it in, you pull this thing back, you push it forward, you fire once at 200 FPS. Huh? 200 now? 200, and it's got slam fire. And it is so fun and scary. This blaster has one-upped the Nexus Pro, not only in its quality of life features, but one-upping what the Nexus Pro was attempting to do in the first place. The Nexus Pro brought 150 FPS to store shelves. This one brings 200 FPS to store shelves. 200! That's a big deal! And the fact that unlike the Nexus Pro, which pretty much just relied on its FPS to sell, this one is actually trying to be a really good blaster. They've introduced a lot of things that have never been seen before, such as a B car that you can buy straight from the store. This is the first B car included with a blaster that you can get just off store shelves. And a scar muzzle is included with it too. That's insane, you're actually getting the accuracy that you would want out of a 200 FPS blaster. Let's talk about the triggers and the smoothness of operation. This blaster, putting the mag in, is just like the Aeon Pro X. It is very, very smooth, very nice flared magwell, so it's really easy to guide the magazine in without screwing up. The mag release is also just like the Aeon Pro X, having the obvious paddle style mag release here and having the four button that you can pull back with your middle finger, which automatically makes this one of the best mag releases ever created by any form of blaster company whatsoever. First, First, the prime smoothness, or not first the prime smoothness, but the prime smoothness here is godlike. It's amazing. And unlike the original, the priming handle doesn't bend down when you reach the back position. Pushing it forwards is very nice. And it once again has a satisfying click when you hit the front position. And then the trigger pull has barely no give to it whatsoever. And then it's super snappy and super responsive. It's a light trigger pull and a very crispy one. So it's easy to accidentally discharge this blaster if you put even a little bit of pressure on the trigger. Like, you're really not even thinking about it and you shoot it. That can be seen as a good thing because it's easy to fire the blaster, but it can also be seen as a bad thing because it's easy to fire the blaster without thinking about it. And just in case you guys were wondering, yes, they kept the little twist knob thing on the back, just like the original Nexus Pro had, which means that with one screw removed and twisting this and pulling it out, you have access to the spring inside the buffer tube stock, which is a really big deal. And speaking of that buffer tube stock, I quickly want to address an interesting detail that this stock has. You see this little orange button? If you pull it forwards, it's a switch that allows the stock to pull up. And inside there is space for the O-rings. Yeah, it's a keyhole. I don't know how that works either, but you have quite a bit of storage in there, which leads me to wonder what the intended usage for this is. Extra darts, batteries, a Lion battery or a LiPo battery or something in there, Skittles, 
M&M's, Japanese symbols for a beginner. Another quick little detail before we get onto the firing demo that I'd like to address is the functionality of this iron sight and scope setup. Obviously, it's a faux scope, it doesn't really do anything, but in this case, it actually does, because this iron sight is raised up a suspicious amount because it perfectly lines up with the reticle seen inside the scope, which means that if you aim through the scope, you line that reticle up with the front iron sight, you will be aiming at whatever the blaster is looking at, which makes this blaster pretty easy to aim without any form of red dot sight or anything like that. It's really cool how they've integrated a functional scope setup into this blaster by making usage of it. Like this is the way a scope really seems to work, like with magnification, being able to see a reticle to aim at what you're actually aiming at. And by putting the reticle on the front of the blaster, it simulates the function of a realistic scope. So what mod potential does the Nexus Pro X have? Well, you know, this is the part where I would say a lot, but to be honest, I'm not really sure because genuinely, this is the first time I'm ever saying this about any blaster, especially a dart zone blaster, but it's simply just really well done out of the box. There's nothing I want to do to this blaster. There are no quality of life upgrades I want to add. There's no spring upgrade or even spring downgrade that I want to add. This blaster genuinely just does everything it's trying to do incredibly well. I am extremely happy with it. I don't want to do any mods to it. And as such, I don't really have any recommendations for mods that people could do to it besides potentially pushing it past 200 FPS. So what do I think of the Dark Zone Nexus Pro X? The original Nexus Pro was a very, very mixed bag. It was a blaster that really sucked at being a blaster, but exceeded at its performance output. But this one not only one-ups that performance output by 50 extra FPS, basically redoing the Nexus Pro's original job for it, but it actually succeeds at being a well-done pro blaster, something that doesn't happen much, because usually these pro blasters exist solely off of their performance numbers and the ability to upgrade them out of the box while, while in their stock configuration, they're just heavily flawed. But this one is one of the only pro blasters that I can think of right now that genuinely just is a really good blaster overall. It's comfortable, it's well built, it's got Picatinny rails on it, it comes with a SCAR and a B-CAR, it includes two magazines, there's tons of quality of life details such as this, this mag release and the scope that it comes with being functional, it's got slam fire, it's smooth to operate. Everything about this blaster that I can think of is done well, and I don't have any complaints with the entire blaster. I don't have any complaints with it. I have none. This blaster is amazing. I'm absolutely blown away to the highest caliber how good this thing is. I was expecting just maybe a little bit better than the Nexus Pro when this thing was revealed and it came out. And I mean, Phase 1 Foam doesn't really like it. I'm not sure if he's used one of these or not. But legitimately, after using this blaster for an extended period of time, getting to play with it at various games, playing around with it at my house, using it through extensive testing and just enjoying it, I just enjoy using this blaster. It is a joy to use. It's fantastic. And it doesn't cost a dime more than the original Nexus Pro. Absolutely pick one of these things up if you have any interest in this sort of blaster whatsoever. Because genuinely, when compared to other options on the market out there, this is one of the best ones I've ever seen in my life. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.